Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. The fortunes of the Conservative Party have taken rather a bashing of late, and it's hardly surprising. But in order to try and head off any kind of major loss at the next election, which is probably going to happen, Rishi Sunak is speculated to have a big cabinet reshuffle over the next couple of weeks. The likes of Suella Braverman are almost certainly out, and he'll bring in a few fresh-faced young people to try and make him look vigorous and go-getting. But it won't wash. The party are going to get eviscerated. And it doesn't matter what new face sits in what new chair. You are simply rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. The ship is going to sink and a lot of people are going down with it. Of course, the biggest problem of which uh, Rishi Sunak has, and he has two. The first, of course, is that the party membership loathe him. He is not the one they voted for. But the second one is that the major personnel problem within the cabinet of the Conservative Party government is Rishi Sunak himself. He is loathed. He is a multi-billionaire who doesn't pay much tax. He's got his green card so he can sod off straight away after he screws the country over. He doesn't understand what it's like for ordinary people suffering under his policies. It's no wonder the Tories are going down. If he wants to save the Conservative Party and give them any hope whatsoever, not for a victory, but just to reduce the, the, the depth of the loss, he needs to resign and go now and give a successor a time to bed in. Like I say, this is only a heads up for the big reshuffle that will come over the next few days. But it's worth looking at because we'll see who the runners and riders are likely to be. But also to see if Rishi Sunak has any idea of how bad it is going to be for him. Here goes. So Braverman tipped for axe in cabinet bloodbath after the Rwanda chaos and a new poll, Oblivion. Uh, and this poll is writing them right out. They're already in a bad position uh, and they're just getting a whole lot worse. Suella Braverman is set for the chop in a bloodbath cabinet reshuffle as Rishi Sunak is expected to wield the axe in a desperate bid to save his government after its Rwanda deportation plan was blocked on Thursday. Well, of course it's going to be blocked you're still a member of the EHCR, even though you don't need to be. Uh, you should have pulled out that, and then you're not subject to their laws. And that way you can create your own laws, and you're answerable to none. It's called being an independent country. It's what we voted for in this country, and it's what the Tory party has failed to deliver. But then they fail to deliver so much. They're all tied up with their own pettiness and squabbling. Uh, it comes as an exclusive Techni UK poll on Thursday night showed that Labour's lead over the Tories has increased by three points to 19%. That is miles. That is so big. There are going to be very, very few Tory MPs at the next, after the next general election. It's an absolute wipeout. And it can all be laid at the door of one man, Rishi Sunak. He's making life harder and harder for people because of his policies. While the polling came before the Rwanda Appeals Court verdict, which saw deportation flights blocked by the judges, the failure to tackle illegal migration has continued to dog Mr Sunak's government. And it has reignited speculation that Ms Braverman will be a high-profile casualty in a reshuffle expected within the next few weeks. One senior Conservative source told The Express the Prime Minister has to do something. At the moment, he is on course to miss all five of his pledges. Somebody has to take the blame and it won't be him. It's his pledges. He's the one controlling everything. Of course, it's his fault. That's what being Prime Minister means. Uh, he needs to fall on his sword and, and resign. Uh, because nothing he does, it'll happen. Because he won't leave that. He won't do this. He won't do the other thing. He won't do anything. Because he doesn't want to look like a leader. He wants to be woke and progressive and court the minority vote. Because that's what the globalist agenda, his paymasters, have said he must do. Ending the small boats crossing the English Channel has been one of Mr Sunak's five pledges, which currently is not set to meet. It's actually getting worse. Instead, after bad weather reduced the figure if early in the year, more than 10,000 have arrived across the Channel this year, with the numbers rising. 
However, the poll is more likely to reflect failures in economic policy with the aim to bring inflation down to below 5% of target and mortgage interest rates threatening thousands of people of losing their homes. That's what he is doing. He is destroying people's homes. He's putting it up. And of course, as all this money goes up, they have to pay a mortgage. That's money coming out of the local economy. And so people are going to lose their jobs there as shops close down or let, lay people off. That sort of thing. It's utterly, utterly destructive because raising interest rates is the only thing he knows. And the point is, we import all our food, which is still rising. We import all this stuff. It doesn't matter what our interest rates are set at. It doesn't affect what we're importing. The prices we're importing aren't controlled by our interest rate raises. So it's just destructive. Anyway, according to Techney's UK survey of 1,631 British voters, Labour has seen its share rise by one point from last week to 46%. The Tories have dropped two points to 27, while the Lib Dems are up one point to 11. Reform UK up one to six and Greens remain on five. Um, so Reform is now ahead of the Greens. I mean, yeah, that gives you a thought, doesn't it? Um, according to the electoral calculus, if this result happened in the general election, the Conservatives would be facing their worst ever defeat with just 112 seats, while Labour would have a majority of 270. It would be a red wall in Parliament. In fact, it would be so much that some of the Labour, some of the Labour MPs would have to sit on the opposition benches because there wouldn't be enough room on the Labour benches, on the government benches. That's how big their majority would be. And that's down to Rishi Sunak. And it, but the only trouble there is it means that there's no opposition. And that's also a dangerous thing. Uh, Techni UK Chief Executive Michael Marizzo said the scenario for Rishi Sunak and his Conservative continues to change and not in a positive way. He says there are many reasons for the fall of the Conservative support. Last week, for example, we had a significant 0.5% interest rate hike that had a negative effect on public opinion and, incidentally, did nothing for inflation. Even if this is strictly the Bank of England's decision, he said, but it's not. It's absolutely not. They claim it's an independent Bank of England, but let me tell you, no, it isn't. They have phone calls. Uh, this week, too, with today's announcement that the millions of pounds spent on the Rwanda asylum proposals are deemed not lawful by the Court of Appeal. This is a key moment where it seems clear that public opinion wants to be taken more into consideration, especially with regards to the daily problems that they are facing. Moreover, people feel a lack of strategy and vision within the party, and that leads to uncertainty. There is no leadership in the, in the Conservative Party. They're running like headless chickens from crisis to crisis to crisis. There's no plan. There's no ideas. They are a government who've been there for too long. They do not know what to do and they lack the balls to do the things they absolutely have to do. There are certain things they could do, but nobody has the spine for it. Uh, the polling puts the Tories behind in every age group, apart from 64 year olds and over, where they lead Labour 41% to 34%. Among the 45 to 54 year olds, the age group most likely to have a mortgage. Labour now lead the Conservatives by 46% to 24. That's a massive change. Labour even leads in the wealthiest economic categories by 38% to 35. It's because even the rich, even the wealthy people now see that this Tory government has had it. It's done. It's got no idea. It doesn't know how to solve the problems it's created. Uh, in, a day, in addition, the Tories have now lost one third of their 2019 vote. They got rid of Boris and that, it's all happened ever since they've attacked Boris. Ever since Boris went, that's been the end of the Conservative fortunes. Because people at the last election didn't vote Tory, they voted Boris. And don't get me wrong, Boris is an awful man. But he had the charm and he, he had the backing of the people. He would be a rogue, but he was like... He was the people's rogue, you know, a serial adulterer, a liar, a man with more children than sense. But he was very much of the people. He understood it. He got it. Sunak hasn't got it. Sunak has never gone hungry. Sunak has never known what it's like not to be able to afford to pay a bill. 
He has no idea whatsoever. And that and it comes across. Old Mowgli. Old Mowgli has no idea about what is going on in the world. And that's no wonder. Uh, anyway. Miss Braverman is not the only potential target in a reshuffle. One MP said there are far too few politicians and far too many managerial types. Penny Dreadful is tipped for promotion from Leader of the House because she knows how to win a political fight. And there's been speculation about Miss Braverman's future when details of a speeding fine were leaked to damage her and Mr Sunak took days to come out in support of his then Home Secretary. Oh yeah, it should have been immediate, you know, but he didn't. And he let it fester. And you could see the writing on the wall then. Uh, one Tory insider said, after the Rwanda debacle today, he will not have a better chance to move Suella if that's his wish. However, friends of Miss Braverman, who's still seen as a future leadership candidate, believe she is the victim of a whispering campaign. But MPs on the left of the party who want, by MPs on the left of the party, who want high immigration. Yes, it's all infighting, backstabbing and civil war in the Tory party at the moment. And it's great to watch. I do love when parties rip themselves apart. Anyway, I shall round off. I shall come up. I think in summary, there is only one thing the Tories can do. They've got to ditch Rishi Sunak. They've got to get Boris back. They've got to forgive him. Uh, and they've got to make him the leader again because he's the only one who can save them. Now, he cannot save them from defeat. That's too late. But what he could do is reduce the size of that defeat. I think he is the only person in that party that can possibly do it at the moment. But while Rishi Sunak is sitting in number 10, the writing is on the wall and it is writ large and it is uncomfortable. And there'll be a lot of Tory backbenchers, particularly, looking at this, looking at the polls, looking at the size of their majority and thinking, you know what? Uh, I'm done. I'm out. Uh, and they'll start uh, announcing their retirement at the next election, I feel. There'll be a lot of them, I think, because I think they know they're going to lose and it's not, they're not going to put the effort in to try and win a seat that they can't possibly win. Anyway, I shall round it there. Thank you very much for watching. If you like what you've seen here on the channel, please hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, leave a like, leave a comment, please share the video. And until next time, stay safe, stay well. And let's settle down with the popcorn and watch this bloodbath unfurl in front of us. Goodbye.